Welcome to the Roadmap to One Million podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Zeal, and if you're looking for the high-level strategies and stories behind building a seven-figure product brand, then you're in the right place. On this show, we'll uncover the advanced strategies, stories, and secrets that you need to know in order to take your e-commerce brand to the next level. Are you ready to uncover your Roadmap to One Million? Let's dive in. All right, y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Roadmap to One Million podcast. I am your host, Stacey Zeal, and I am excited to welcome you back here to another great guest episode. Y'all have been asking me about this for a minute, and so I am super, super excited to have um, Selena Johnson here, who is going to talk all about hiring, y'all. We are going to talk about hiring your A-team and all the things that it takes to really kind of like build up that team. So if you are someone who is thinking about expanding your team or you have a team and you're really wanting them to make sure that you're you, you, uh, you're using them as effectively as you can and setting them up for success and you definitely want to make sure you're listening to this episode. Also make sure that you are subscribed to the show. So make sure you're following the show on your podcast app of um, choice. You also can listen to our show on the on your desktop now on our website. If you go to stacyzeal.co slash podcast, that's where you'll also find all the links. That's where you'll find all the links from today's show. Any kind of resources that we mentioned, you will find here. So let me go ahead and read her bio and then I'm going to kick it over to her. So um, Selena Johnson is a globally recognized solution-focused people strategist, operations consultant, and speaker who who helps her clients build, lead, and retain their teams to free up their time for greater joy, fulfillment, and freedom. Come on, joy, fulfillment, and freedom. Um, over the last 19 years, she's worked with um, two dames, a billionaire investor, and CEOs around the world to confidently build accountable, motivated teams to drive their vision so they can reinvest their time and energy in creating next level impact. She loves organization and structure and even created an SOP for her six-year-old. Come on, SOP for the six-year-old. Um, and so let's just say she is the chief of team simplicity. So welcome, welcome to the show. How are you today? <laughs> I'm super pumped and excited to be here. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm doing really great. Thank you. Good. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. So we've already definitely given your bio, but I love to have our um, guests come on and tell us a little bit about their journey. So Tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming the chief of team simplicity. <laughs> so actually it started off completely where you wouldn't think of. I studied um, at university, a graphic, graphic design um, master's. Um, I was very creative. I was always one of those people scribbling on the floor at home or with my chalk on the ground. Um, but what I noticed was I was very solution focused from a young age. So always when there was a problem, I was always looking for the solution. So as I was doing this degree and getting all these briefs, and then when I was working in different businesses, um, when I was employed, I noticed that there was always a problem that I was solving. And it just naturally progressed where after I left my nine to five of organizing people, but also seeing how teams can impact the business, I realized that was the next journey for me was to embark on that and help business owners who don't have it easy because they don't have all their ducks in a row from the beginning of, of day one when they start their business. And I wanted to be able to help them to help them to grow their business, get them closer to their goals and vision by building that strong team. And that's where I'm very, my mind has like, I, I've come from a background where I've always got all these things going on in my mind. And I find a way to dissolve it down to simple st strategies that don't overwhelm me, but actually I progress forwards as well. And I, I can see looking back what I've achieved from simplifying things. So that's what I'm about. Not overcomplicating things, just keep it simple and just focus on that one thing. Yeah, I love that. I love what I love that you, you know, started out as a graphic designer, really started to, you know, make your mark and then started to see that you just had a skill set that um, helps people to be organized. And like, I know for me, like, you know, organization is something that I struggle with. I'm very much, I'm the idea person. I am like the, you know, come up with the ideas. I have the big vision, but actually bringing it, simplifying it and making it streamlined is something that I definitely struggle with. So I'm super excited for this conversation today um, because I think it's one thing that is so important, I would say for our next level CEOs, because a lot of people listening to this show are, they're leveling up, right? They're in their level up season. Mm. They've been in business and they're really trying to take things to the next level. And I do honestly believe that having a team is essential to being able to get to your next level. Because I know even, you know, for me and my business, like 
without a team, this does this show does not run, y'all. Let me tell you, like we, <laughs> I, I, like as I mentioned, I'm the idea person. I'm, I'm big vision, but I need people mm -hmm. on my team that can help to break that down into steps and actually say, like, okay, we can't go from A to Z right now. We have to go from A to B to C to D. Um, and I, that's what I rely on my team for mm -hmm. to really, really kind of help me ground into what the, to the actual getting stuff done, <laughs> the execution phases of mm -hmm. it. Um, so tell us a little bit about like, you know, why is it important for us as CEOs to really focus on hiring an A team, not just hiring, you know, a, a team, but like having a team of rock stars of our A plus players, like tell us why that's important. Because within businesses, there's so many moving pieces that are happening. And even though we may have done everything at the beginning of our business ourselves and juggled all the plates and we're able to do it, when you reach to a larger scale, it's impossible to keep your hands on all the balls consistently. And what I've noticed is if you're doing it all yourself, you're affecting your reputation, you're affecting um, the service of how you're committing to your clients, you're affecting how you show up, your, your energy changes when you're overwhelmed or you're exhausted. Um, it's often things that we know how to do, we can't often think logically because we're just in a, in a way where we're just on overdrive, we're burnt out. So having a team that's with you is one thing, but having a highly motivated team is someone who's the same level as you or can do things better than you is going to put you in a, such a high element that you don't even need to worry about what they're doing. You don't need to worry, oh my, can I trust them? You know that they're two, three steps ahead of you that you don't even need to ask them to do this because they've done it already. And you can just focus on the stuff that you know is going to drive the business revenue, is going to drive you into those areas that you needed to focus on. So the anal analogy that I like to look at is that you're trying to get from your A to B. And if you have a strong unit with you, that arch to get you there is going to be amazing and you're going to get there quicker and you're going to get to that vision and gold but if it's a team that maybe are some are not strong or they're not in the right place they're not in the right skill set or the role's not for them there's going to be bumps in the roads it's going to be swaying from side to side there's going to be setbacks we have to go back two steps to go forwards again there's going to be delays um and it can be a point where you just say, I'm just going to burn down and start again and do it all on my own. So when you have a strong team with you, it's all in unison to get you there quicker without you having to lift too much of the weight. Yeah. Yeah. I love all that you said, because like one of the things that sticks out is, um, you know, so many moving pieces in business. And that is just so, it's so, so important for us to understand as CEOs. And I'll even give you, I'll give you all an example. So I had a workshop um, uh, last month and I felt like, I was like, okay, well, you know, I was going in, I was doing something in my convert kit in my email. And I was like, you know what, since I'm in here, let me go ahead and like schedule <laughs> these emails to go out for the reminder emails. It's like, we're live, you know, 15 minutes we're, and, and stuff like that. So I go and I do that. And mind you, I was tired. It was a long day. I was getting ready to go on vacation. So I was also tired. And so then I get to the next day, I do my workshop and then I check my email and I see like an email that just went out that said that we're live now. And I'm like, I just finished. <laughs> so <laughs> come to find out, I scheduled it for the wrong time. I scheduled the live mm -hmm. now email to go out at the wrong time um, because I was tired. I was, you know, I wasn't operating at my best and I was trying to do things that I could have just had my assistant do. And I could have just said like, hey, put this on your Asana board. Can you actually, you know, do this? And so it's so important because like you said, so many different moving pieces, right? Like just even something as simple as like making sure you schedule things to go out at the right time. Cause I had so many other things I was focused on that day. Um, but you know, it, that was a lesson for me that just like, you know, let my mm -hmm. team do things that they are good at, right. And just tell them to do that kind of thing. Um, and that kind of brings me into like one of the questions I have is about like, you know, a common problem for CEOs, as I just mentioned, is delegating. And you have a whole like system for delegating and a whole like force and all that kind of stuff about delegating, which I love. So tell us, can you give us a, a, a little bit of some some tips or some thoughts or some things to, to help us um, when we're thinking about delegating and like, you know, cause it's important to build the team, but then we also as the CEO have to make sure that we're giving them stuff to do. And I know that for me, I will absolutely, as I just mentioned, I will just go and do something and be like, oh, it's so easy mm -hmm. for me to do. I'm already in here. Let me just go ahead and do it. But then what happens is you make mistakes. <laughs> so give us a little bit yeah. about, like, give us a little bit about like delegating some tips, some common kind of like challenges that we face with delegating and how we can come overcome those things.
Hey there, CEO. Are you tired of creating content after content after content only to have it die in the feed after a few days? Do you wish there was a way to make more money without needing to create even more content? Well, there is. Facebook ads. When you invest in Facebook ads, you one, get off that organic hamster wheel of creating endless amounts of content to hit your sales goals. Two, you generate quality leads that are dying for your offers 24 seven. And three, you put your sales on autopilot without all the time and effort of hustling organically. After generating over $150 million with Facebook ads for some of your favorite brands like Zappos, Crocs, Adidas, and hundreds more, I have distilled all of that knowledge into my signature framework called the Zeal Method. If you are ready to stop posting 17 reels a day and learn how to create long-term sustainable success by investing in Facebook ads, I invite you to watch my free workshop, Maximize Your Money, How to Exponentially Increase Your Sales with Facebook Ads. In this workshop, you'll learn the three things you must have in place before investing in Facebook ads for maximum success. You'll learn what it takes to create ads that attract your ideal clients 24 seven, and you'll learn my signature zeal method that my clients use to run ads that generate quality leads on autopilot. Head over to stacyzeal.co slash maximize to watch the workshop and learn how to learn the exact steps to exponentially increase your sales with less effort by investing in Facebook ads. All right, let's jump back into the episode. So my focal point always is protecting my peace, protecting my energy. And that's always stayed at the forefront. And when I have that in the forefront, it makes it easier for me to then say, what can I give to somebody else? Because like you mentioned, doing that task just took you like one minute, two minutes to do. But if there's an error that is so detrimental to the, the your business, the result that you expect it or to have anticipating to receive. So giving it to somebody else who does this day in, day out, they're the go-to expert in it there's more likely to be less mistakes happening. But then how do you get to the stage where you say, okay, I know I can do it, but I'm not going to, I'm going to give it to this team member to do for me. So in terms like to do with launches, what I like to do is focus for myself. Okay, I'm doing this masterclass. At the end of it, I'm going to promote my program as an example. Okay, what's all the moving pieces? So my, for myself, I will know all the moving pieces because that's how my mind works. But for others who are visionary, they may not know all the details of what needs to happen for that launch. So that's where you need to bring in a team to support you with that. Maybe someone who's in-house already that's in your business, or you can hire somebody just specifically for this project to support you. So an example of that could be that you'd have a tech person who's creating your registration page. Uh, the email sequences, the payment processor, you may have a graphic designer to help with the design of the pages, to help with the social media graphics, any graphics on emails. You may have a copywriter or maybe you do, depending on what stage your business is, you might do it yourself. Um, and then you may have just an admin person in the business as well. So there could be three to four people that you're working with. And what the mistakes often happen is you're reporting to each one of them individually about what's going on. Bring them all together for this specific project. Get them on a call and say, I'm going to be doing this project on the, um, I'm doing this masterclass on the 18th of May. This is the title. This is who it's for. My aim is to get 100 people on this live. And then I'm going to sell them the program. And I want to get 20 people on this program for 997 for six months or whatever, whatever the price structure is. Then they have the opportunity to ask you any questions of the missing gaps that's going to help them to perform the task that they need to do. It also gives them the opportunity to think of things that you haven't even thought about that need to be added into this whole project. It also, the advantage of that is they then know who's who's working on the project so that if they have any questions about specific that stuff that's going on, they can speak directly to that person rather than coming back to you as a CEO. So for example, if you had a tech person creating the um, registration page, they noticed that something didn't quite look right with the call to action or the copy didn't look like it's finished. Uh, the convert, like just, there was just something not right about it. They can just go directly to the copywriter or if the, there was going to be delay with the project deadlines and they knew that the copywriter needed it on this day, but they felt, felt like they couldn't get it done. They can work together to say, I know you needed it to do it in two days. Are you able to turn it around in one day? So all this communication works really well when you sit together with them. And this can just be like a 30, 45 minute call. And you'd have an agenda free to the core to say, this is what we're discussing specifically. And you then, you like the admin person, write down these are the actions of what's happening. And then someone's going to put all this into the project management tool, like Asana. 
And when I've done this before, I've had one page in Asana and it's got tech support and it's got uh, all the subtasks for the tech person, copywriter, all the subtasks for them, admin support, maybe it's just proofreading or just double checking all the links work, for example. Graphic designer is going to create the logos, whatever it is, they're going to do that. And then with each task, it's got a deadline date and it's got it assigned so that for you as a CEO who's super busy and is focused on and creating an impact and showing up luck to do live, you can actually go in on one screen and see, okay, this has been done, this is behind, this is on track in one place. It makes it so much easier. But also, if you're going to rinse and repeat this launch, you can just duplicate that whole board without having to start a game from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such, a, that's such an important piece, y'all. Like, being able to one, get your team together. That's something I'm definitely like, you know, um, wanting to do more of, more of on my side because like I find like I'll plan stuff out and then I'll just get with my team and say, okay, this was this is what needs to be done. Um, but the way that you said it, like bringing your team together, letting them know like what the goal is, what are we doing? You know, what are we trying to make happen here? And having them be able to ask questions and to fill in the pieces that you're missing because that's so, mm -hmm. you know, so key. Like I know for me, like, as I mentioned, I'm the visionary. I'm the, you know, I can, I can see the vision. I can see, you know, see the, you know, kind of forecast of the future, but thinking about the individual steps, I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. Or, oh, we didn't think, you know, we didn't think that we needed that. Or, oh, we got to make yeah. sure that we update, you know, our, our welcome sequence. We got to make sure that we update this or do like all of those different things are just so important. Um, and bringing people together and having people to understand like, what is the vision, especially your marketing team. I and mean, we're going to talk about marketing teams specifically in a second, um, because that's one, you know, people, people are tuning into this show to listen to one of my marketing and business. And I get questions all the time about who should be on my marketing team. Um, and so before we even think about that, like being able to bring everybody together so that way they can understand like who's doing what and making sure that everybody's communicating with each other, make sure everybody's aligned on the vision is so, so important. So I love that you mentioned that. Um, and let's talk a little bit about marketing teams specifically and, and more so like, how do you know who needs to be on your team? Because I know that's another thing that kind of trips us up um, as far as when we're thinking about, you know, building a team and things like that is like, who do I need to have on my team? And so how do you balance hiring someone who is more a generalist or more of a specialist? And I'll give you a little bit of kind of like context there. So I have people ask me all the time, who do I need to have on my marketing team? Like, do I need to have like, or some people come to me because I, I, I offer um, a fractional CMO services and people come to me and ask, and they're like, oh, I need a CMO. And it's like, okay, well, let's talk about who's on your team already. And I'm just like, you don't need a CMO, you need a marketing assistant. <laughs> like, You need someone who's actually executing the tasks and not someone who's coming in to oversee the high level strategy yet, because the strategy is going to come from the execution, right? Like, so as the person is executing and posting things on Instagram and sending emails out, then as a CMO, I have data to be able to look at, to see what's working, what's not working. How do we make sure that we do more of what's working and how do we do less of what's not working um, on a very high level? So how do we, as the CEO, think about like, who do I need on my team? Do I need someone who's like a specialist? Like, do I need to hire a Facebook ads person? Or do I need someone who's like a marketing assistant or a marketing generalist who can kind of have their hands in a lot of different things? Um, how do how do we figure that that piece of it out? Or where do we start with, with figuring that out? That's a great question. And one thing we mustn't do is look at somebody else's business and say, okay, they have these four people, so I must have those four people because that's yeah. a real mistake that often happens. No one business is the same. Everyone's business model is set up differently, even if it's in the same industry. Um, your goals are different. The way you show up is different. Your targets are different. Um, the, the hours you work are different. So it's really, di it's, we can often look and we try to reflect what others are doing. Um, but it's really important to look at, okay, this is currently the services I'm providing. This is the vision of where in the next six months or 12 months, these are the services I want to introduce or remove what's currently working and what's not currently working with my team right now? Where are the gaps in my team? And then identifying, okay, I've noticed that with the social media support I've got right now, they are not perhaps in my head, they're not producing the content that looks like it's coming from me. It's not the greatest right now. So maybe this person's not really at the high level I'm expecting them to be at. So what can we do to, do they need to do more training to support them? Or is it that this... My business has scaled so far in advance now that where they were, where I was early on in the business, they can no longer take me to the next trajectory of my business. So it may be that you need to up-level your team 
and then bring in somebody like more strategist to come in to give you the guidelines. OK, this is what your plan should be for the next six months. And then you hire somebody like an imp implementer, so a generalist who can just do the implementing in your business. So it really, really depends on the setup of your business and the services you're providing. And there isn't really uh, a quick guide answer, unfortunately, that I can give you for that. But I think that you need to do the homework first and just review what is currently working and not working, not working. Look at like mistakes that's happened and learn from them to say, OK, this is what I've done before and it hasn't worked. So now I'm going to do it this way. And it's often just testing the water. So look at hiring a, a specialist for a VIP day or for two hours just to come in and review everything and give you some guidance is then going to make you know which way then you should go forward in your business also. Yeah. Yeah. Those are such great points, y'all. Like a couple of things that she was saying is like figuring out where the gaps are, looking at what's working and what's not working. Um, I definitely agree with all of those things, and especially with your marketing team. Like, you know, a lot of people come to me and they're just like, they're either making that first marketing hire. And I always tell them, I'm like, you need an implementer first. Like you need somebody who's going to mm -hmm. do the execution of the marketing because then that's going to dictate what the strategy is going to be. You got to start trying some different things to see what's working. Um, and like, I'll you know, even thinking about like when I was at Zappos, like our marketing team had like 30 people on it. And the marketing team consisted of like, there were like five people that were working on email. There was, you know, my, myself and one other person that was focused on ads, like paid social ads specifically, had a whole other team of people who was focused on Google ads and, and some of the other ad platforms and, and just all the other things we were doing. We had copywriters. We had all these people on our team. But it didn't start like that, right? It really started based on assessing like what are the needs of the mm -hmm. business and then how do we find the people who can plug into these different to these different spaces. And so I definitely encourage you, like if you're making that first marketing hire, that person should definitely be someone who's an executor, someone who can actually like execute what they're doing. Because until you can actually get to that place where you need a strategist, you as a CEO are the strategist, right? Because you have to be able to look at your data and understand like, okay, well, what is working and what's not working? Like if you're seeing that, you know, ads or something that's working really, really well for you, then maybe you do want to train someone on how to do ads specifically in-house so that you don't have to pay those agency fees. Or you're actually seeing that, you know, that uh, uh, like email is working really well for you. So maybe you want to hire someone who has a, has a focus on email who or who has an email background. But I love what you said, like it's about figuring out where are the gaps and really like taking a step back to assess like where are the gaps, where do I need the help, who do I need to kind of pull in and pull in, plug in and take some of these things off of my plate so that way I can take things to the next level. Um, so what are some of the challenges that CEOs face when they are hiring their A team and how do they kind of overcome, you know, some of those like, you know, one or two of those challenges, like one or two of the big challenges that you see in, with CEOs hiring um, in the hiring space, like what are some of those challenges and how do we kind of move past those? I think the number one biggest challenge I see is the time. They don't have the time. So they hire very quickly because they need someone in like yesterday. And the thought process of the interviewing process is very short and not very intentional because they're, they're, they're just crushed for time. So they just bring in somebody maybe based on recommendation or someone who's available to start now. And they don't have the time to onboard them properly. And because this person has talked the talk, they just assume they know everything about the business. They can do it all, all bells and whistles, and they just leave them to get on with it. So the CEO goes back to what they were doing. And then a few weeks later, they realize things are not working or their statistics are dropping or then they're not making as much money as they were. And they notice this payroll's going out to this person who's meant to be freeing up their time, but then notice that you're still doing a lot of the firefighting. So it's really important that we, if if it gets to that stage where you need to hire somebody, make sure you've got the time carved out to be able to bring them into the business. So that starts from the interviewing process to the onboarding of them to actually then starting to delegate tasks to them as well um, is really key because it, it shows in studies that CEOs who um, excel in delega delegating, they generate 33% higher revenue. 33%. So we are missing a lot of money. We're throwing money away right now and leaving money at the table when we're not delegating the right way. So it's very important that we have the time capacity to be able to support these team members. Um, and just think about instances where you've worked for somebody else and you've where you've had a great boss and there's places where you've been in an environment where it's, where it's been really to toxic, you just wanted to get the hell out of there. And 
look at those examples to remember how you felt and then how you would want that person to feel working for you. Are you just looking for someone who's a transaction in your business that's just going to come here, here today, gone tomorrow? Or are you looking for someone who's going to up level in your business that you can then build this great rapport with that's going to be your go to, your number one or someone that you know that if you need to take an emergency out of your business for a week, you know that your business can still uphold because this person knows what they're doing. And if that is you, then you need to dedicate the time in your business to support them. Don't expect you need to be inspecting what they're doing from day one. So eventually you can let go and take off the reins and know that they are excelling in your business without you. Yeah. Yeah. That's such great advice, y'all. So like actually taking the time and, and blocking off the time or setting aside the time, however you want to look at it to make sure that you are hiring the right person, you're onboarding that person, you're delegating and giving them tasks and you're like kind of watching what they're doing and helping them to get up, up to speed. Because that's such a good point that you mentioned is that like we expect people to, just because they know about our business, maybe they've done their homework, they've done their background and they're like, oh, I know your business. We expect them to be able to come in and just like, hit the ground running. Um, when really we have, we as a CEO have to make the time and I get like, you know, we're, we're time strapped cause I'm, I'm in a process of thinking like, okay, who's my next hire now? Um, and so it's like, yeah, like I'm in the day to day of work. I'm focused, you know, I have so many things to do, but if I take the time to hire the right person to onboard that person, to get them up to speed and to delegate to them, then eventually that frees up my time. And that way I can start to let things go. So it does take a little bit of taking on a little bit of extra task and making that room for for all of this stuff so that in the future you can start to hand things off and you can and your plate can get a little bit lighter um so and i and i honestly look at that a little bit you know and i relate that to ads a little bit as well it's like you know people don't want to take the time out to like set to actually take the time to start to invest in the ads to start to see what's working to watch their numbers and really kind of make some optimizations and changes along the way we want it to we want to just be able to start them and they just go great right but that's not realistic and and you know whether it's on the ad side of things or it's on the hiring side of things it's unrealistic for us as ceos to just expect us to just start something and then just go smooth sailing right we have to take the time to be intentional with what we're doing because we're we're, we're having to kind of ask ceos kind of jump between the day the the, to the the now and the future and that's one of the things we that's that's as entrepreneurs that's what we have to do we're, we have to balance between seeing like what needs to get done today, but then also what is this leading up to? Like, what is this outcome, the ultimate outcome? And if the ultimate outcome, you know, for you as a CEO is to be able to spend less time in your business, is to be able to have a team of rock stars of people who can actually take over, you know, if you have to be out or if you want to go on vacation and stuff like that, you know, then we have to just be intentional with how we're spending our time now and take that time and invest it into building our team, uh, building our A team, you know, not just building a team, but building our A team. So I, I love that, all that you said. Um, and I love that you pointed out that we were like 33, you get 33% more revenue when you delegate. Like to me, I'm just like, wow, okay. Yeah. So I'm leaving money on the table because I'm trying to do all these things myself, like going into convert kit and scheduling, you know, scheduling emails, <laughs> you know? And so I, I love that. So you have a lot of different things to help us with hiring, us CEOs with hiring. One of the things I saw on your site was you have a template for how to hire your A team. And I was like, ooh, this is awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about that and tell us a little bit about other some of the other ways that people can work with you if they are looking to um, really, really be intentional with their hiring um, of their A team? Yeah, so this is um, how to hire your A-team template because I noticed that a lot of people get stuck at the beginning part of actually bringing on the right people and actually attracting the right people. So say, imagine you're on a dating site, you have this amazing profile and you, you put, you're intentional about what you put on that dating site to make sure that you attract this dream person that you want to go on a date with. So it's the same when you're hiring someone or when you're creating your sales page and you're trying to attract specific clients. We need to do the same when we're hiring our team as well and take the time to put out there, this is what I'm looking for and this is what I don't want, so that we attract our A-team and we repel the people who are not a right fit for us. So this is a freebie that I've got that's gonna help you to know how to get clear on that. And um, there's a video training video that goes with that. So you can access that by going to selenajohnson.com forward slash free. And you can, um, I'm doing some, this year I'm doing regular masterclasses every month around building and retaining your team. So you can look out for any information on that by going to my website, selenajohnson.com. And you can follow me on Instagram. I am Selena Johnson.
Awesome. Yeah. No, I, I love that you have the template. Um, also, y'all, I saw her say she has a course on delegating. Like I'm so I'm like, I'm looking at that. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is something, as I mentioned, I can so much get better at. So we're gonna make sure that all of the links to the um to the to the template, to the hiring your 18 template, um, to the master classes, all that kind of stuff is gonna be in the show notes. So make sure that you head over to stacysdale.co slash podcast and you'll be able to see the show notes or the link, you know, the show notes are linked in the um description below. Um this has been such a great conversation. Like it's been so eye opening to me um, because it's like, I know on, you know, on a, on a, on the surface level that hiring is so important and making sure that you have the right team is super important. Um, I honestly lucked up and got a great assistant when the, at my first hire. And so, you know, I, I, so I, it's, it's, this conversation has just been so eye opening to me about one, how much money I'm leaving on the table by trying to do all the things myself. Um, and really just like how to be very intentional with getting the right people onto your team, making sure that you get them up, get them up to speed. So that way, eventually you do, you know, you can get to that point where you are feeling like your workload is a little bit lighter. So sometimes I think we as CEOs have to be able to kind of bite the bullet in the beginning to just be like, let me take the time to like, you know, do to, to be intentional, to hire this person, to get them up to speed. So that way, eventually it starts to pay off in the long run. So thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a great conversation for sure. Anything that you want to leave us with um, before we close out? Yeah, I think this is a great way to end it based on our discussion is that we are all, including myself, playing it small. We are amazing at what we do. And just think about how much more greater impact you could give to your community if you're showing up in your amazing self with all that energy that you have, that vibrant knowledge you have. There's somebody that needs your support right now and you can't get to them because of the time capacity or the availability is not there right now. So don't play it small, build that team, build your solid team and to support you to get closer to your vision and to impact amazing people all around the world. Yes, I love that. Come on with the mic drop. Don't play small, y'all. Let's get the let's get out here and have this bigger impact that we want to have. There's a lot of a lot of people are listening to this show. Like if you're listening to this show, you want to have impact, right? You want to have a big impact. You have a big vision and you want to bring that to life. And that vision ties back to being able to impact as many people as possible. And so we definitely need to make sure that we are investing in our hiring so that we, we can have that greater impact. So thanks so much again for coming on the show. Make sure y'all go and follow the show if you're not following the show. If let me know what you thought about this episode. Let me know if this has helped you and you know in the hiring space. So you can hit both of us up on Instagram. Make sure you're sharing this with your friends, tagging some people in here who you know need to go ahead and stop being a solopreneur and go ahead and hire this next <laughs> go ahead and hire somebody um, and get them on the team so that they can have a greater impact. So thanks again, y'all. That's this has been the Roadmap to One Million show. We'll see y'all on the next episode. OMG, that episode was packed with gems. Are you ready for more? Head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast to get the show notes and to sign up to get our top five podcast episodes to help you streamline your marketing so you can make this your million dollar year. Head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast.